Ms. Janice Cavolt. I'm minority owner of JBC Corp in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, she established the firm together with her husband, Mr. Brian Cavalt, who is, though unable to attend today, uh, is a service-disabled veteran, uh, established being the company in 2006. Thank you very much for being with us today, and I'd like to invite you to make any opening remarks you'd like to do. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Schock, and members of this subcommittee. Thank you for inviting our company to testify before your subcommittee and discuss ensuring stimulus contracts for small and veteran-owned businesses. My name is Janice Cavolt, and I am re representing JBC Corp. and presenting testimony for Brian Cavolt, my husband and business partner. My husband is Brian Cavolt and is a 100% rated service-disabled veteran. He retired as a Master Chief after 29 years of active duty in the U.S. Navy. Since 2006, he has owned and operated JBC Corp, a service-disabled veteran-owned small business. JBC Corp is a provider of medical trauma kits for the military. Our kits are custom designed and packed to order as specified by the government. Our company is located and we reside in the city of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, my military service and experience as an operator and hospital corpsman with special forces inspired and enabled me to continue to serve the active duty warfighter by providing medical kits designed specifically for administering trauma combat casualty care under fire. As a business owner and veteran, I have regular and continuing contact with other veteran-owned small businesses. As small business owners, we face many of the same challenges and share the same concerns. Currently, the economy is our greatest concern. We are aware that the economic climate could have a tremendous effect on our businesses. We recognize that it is important that we position ourselves and not be vulnerable to the unfair practice of not being able to bid on contracts that are automatically assigned to prime vendors. The government has a variety of ways to purchase the items required for its many agencies and departments to conduct business. Although the requirements and methods vary, it seems the common objective for the government is to obtain quality products at reasonable prices with reliable availability while providing an opportunity for U.S. businesses to progress and become an integral component in the economy. One method of procurement the government employs is the prime vendor contractor. The prime vendor was created to enable the government to purchase products from manufacturers who do not have contracts of their own with the government. Prime vendors are frequently used to obtain and deliver the best equipment to our troops at war in an expeditious manner. Prime vendors can be used to bypass contracting personnel to expedite orders and eliminate the requirement of justification for purchasing a superior, reliable product over a less expensive, inferior model with unknown reliability. While the reasons stated here seemingly justify the use of prime vendors, it is my belief that the very system created to improve the procurement of products for our military does not work in a way that promotes or ensures economic growth and stability for small businesses. Further, the system does not protect the government from excess wasteful spending and in many cases does not adequately serve the end users of those purchased products. The prime vendor is a giant in the government procurement system. As such, they exercise great power over the small business who is trying for the opportunity to get their product to market. Sometimes that power becomes abusive. A small business may take years to develop a product, show it to an interested party, and then find that their only recourse to sell in any large volume requires a prime vendor be involved. Refusal to accept the terms of business from a prime vendor is a no-win option, as to do so puts your product at risk, as it is not uncommon for the prime vendor to take your product and actively pursue manufacturers that will produce it for them. The tactics used by many prime vendors to take advantage of the small business are coercive and frequently test the ethical standards of business. We were invited to do business with, with different prime vendors on two separate occasions when our product was being sought for purchase. In both instances, we were pressured to get an agreement in place quickly so that orders could be received. The main issues addressed in both agreements were the price payment terms and consequences for default. Both PVs wanted a preferred price going so far as to say they needed room to get additional points in their markup. As manufacturers, we calculate our sell price by taking the actual cost of the items, adding our labor, other overhead costs, and factoring a conservative markup. We have found that in most cases, the prime vendor's markup often matches our profit. The idea that both entities make the same profit when the work for each is considerably different does not seem fair or equitable. 
It is the attitude of the prime vendors we have done business with that makes us reluctant to keep doing business through such a vehicle. And in the interest of time, I'm going to jump ahead here um, just to what our suggestions are or what we have observed. Um, it is suggested that government procurement regulations be reviewed, modernized, and streamlined to give equal opportunity to multiple American businesses. In addition, is, it is an opportunity to renovate a system that has become inefficient and that places cost containment and the ability to provide items in a timely manner secondary to finding the easiest way to push an order through. There are procurement methods in place and available that with modification could significantly elevate the opportunity for small businesses to compete. Uh, those would include uh, being able to raise limits that credit cards can be can be used. Sole source contracts could should go directly to the manufacturer of the product. And um, I'm out of time, but I thank you for your for for the time to be able to present. This is my oral testimony, but my statement is in its full edition. And I would appreciate if you would take the time to read it. Thank you.